Hey guys, what's going on? Hope everybody's doing good out there today. Welcome back to the channel. And today I have a true secret for you guys. You know, I've talked a lot about, and I, I do tips, uh, you know, occasionally if you've seen the channel much in the past, talking about secret modifications and secret tips. And, uh, you know, some of them are secret to a lot of people. Some people know about them, you know, through the grapevine. There's different levels to how secret a tip is, but the one I'm going to share with you guys today is I don't think very many people do this. I mean, I really don't. I think it's something that uh, uh, it gets overlooked by the majority of the people out there. And even the people that maybe do it don't talk about it ever. And it's actually was based upon uh, some studies that I read uh, on crawfish. And I'm going to give you guys some real juice, a big secret here. So stay tuned with that. And Anyway, before we get started here, I just want to remind you guys, um, you know, as you know, Johnny and I are working on these fish in the moment lake map breakdowns, breaking down lakes all across the country for the summer season. You can check that out at fishinthemoment.com. We also do personal lake map breakdowns. And stay tuned on uh, July 22nd, Johnny and I are having our next virtual seminar on fish in the moment. Uh, we're going to be doing it on natural lakes, smallmouth fishing, largemouth fishing up north applicable to any other lake, man-made impoundment down south. So we hope to see you there. And you can sign up to that uh, at fishthemoment.com. Uh, it's limited to a certain number of people in it, so you might check it out and see if there's any openings available. Okay, let's talk a little bit about this crawfish modification I'm talking about here. Um, I have used, you know, the plastic crawfish imitators forever since they came out. Um, First one that I ever started using was the old um, Jean LaRue salt craws. That was a fish catching bait. It's still a fish catching bait. It was one of the original crawfish out there uh, about the same time the Guido bug came out of there. I never really started using the Guido bug uh, too much, uh, you know, when it came out. I, I caught a lot of fish on the baby Guido bug, but to be honest, I never really did that much on the regular Guido bug. But the salt crawl by Jean LaRue, I caught tons of fish on it. And then there's been modifications to salt to uh, different uh, crawls uh, throughout the course of the year. And uh, the one that I use now pretty much is the uh, Zoom Little Critter Crawl. I've used it for a long time. They also make a bigger one. Um, this is the Little Critter Crawl right here. This is actually my go-to bait uh, on any type of finesse jig you know i really like it for that and they make a bigger one too called a critter craw um, but this tip that i'm going to show you guys is it's something that you can do with any crawfish type bait so anyway how i got onto this is i started doing there were several different studies that was done on crawfish and how bass reacted to crawdads and a lot of them, it's like, it's some pretty fascinating studies out there as far as, you know, when bass feed on them primarily, you know, their molting seasons, you know, their habitats, there's a lot of information on that. But in this one particular study I read, they were talking about when a bass came up against a crawfish, you know, with two pinchers, you know, sticking up like that, a lot of them were pretty wary of it. They didn't, you know, they were, they'd still bite them, you know, but they, they were a lot more wary and they also noticed in the sampling that one time, if you had a crawdad that had lost one pincher and it only had one pincher on it, that the bass were like a um, hundred times more likely to bite that crawdad with one pincher on it. And they also uh, said a crawdad that had no pinchers on it, a bass was 250 times more likely to bite that crawdad with no pinchers on it because it posed no threat to it. So the tip that I'm gonna show you guys today is simply this: take your crawdad and just take and just pull off one of the legs on it. I just take the you know the the little critter crawl like that. You know, just pull the leg off them. I usually take the tentacles off too, like that. And this one crawdad uh, pincher on a finesse jig, I have absolutely ripped them on this. And I actually, you know, I, it's I actually had done this even before I read that study where I've accidentally lost a craw. Um, fish bit it off or something, pitched it back in there, and the fish hit it with one crawdad. And I just thought it was because the fish was, uh, you know, hot and ready to bite and aggressive. But it wasn't until I saw that study that I started actively doing this. So if I'm in a situation, particularly that's come pretty clear water where the bass can get a visual on it, I always pull one of the craws off my jigs like that. I've experimented with it in different situations, and if you have water visibilities, 
that are say under uh, two foot in visibility, it doesn't seem like it makes that big of a difference. I mean, for me, it's like, it's a deal where the water clarity needs to be, you know, in that three to six foot range. So, and that's the, that's the times that I'm fishing a lot of finesse jigs uh, is in that three to foot four, three to four plus foot clarity. And it's just because they can get a visual on that run, on that one crawl there. I've actually tried it, you know, since I read that study, you know, I've tried it, uh, pinching both of them off and that's what it looks like right there. And I just haven't done any good on it. I know that, uh, the study said that the bass are a lot more likely to hit it with no pinchers on it, but for something, for some reason, when you use it on a jig trailer, um, and even on the Texas rig a little bit, I just haven't had that much success on it. So maybe that's more applicable to like a live crawdad. But anyway, guys, give it a try. Just take your, take your craw, whatever your favorite craw is, you know, bite one of the legs off of it. Give it a try if you're in the clear water situation. And I can promise you, they will bite it. And, you know, you, it's up to yourself if you can determine if you're getting more bites or less bites. But I can assure you, they will bite it just as good or better than with a full-size two-leg craw on it in the clean water situation. So thanks again, guys, for checking the video. I much appreciated. Um, if you guys haven't had a chance to subscribe yet, please do so. Half you dudes watching these videos I'm putting out aren't subscribing. Just, just uh, appreciate hitting that subscribe button and the like button. It helps out a lot. And we'll be back soon with another one. See you.